Hey friends, welcome to Naked in Truth, the podcast that's designed to open up your mind, to help you break down walls and barriers in your life that you might not even know exist yet. But don't worry, every wall that we break down together on this podcast allows you the opportunity to level up and create your impact. With that being said, I think it's time for us to get honest, vulnerable, and naked in truth. Well, hello, 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 and welcome back to the Naked in Truth podcast. It is me, Sari D, and I'm so happy to be back here with you guys today. It's a big episode where we are going to be diving in deep to my personal health, but also into education and inspiration as to how you can be empowered to look after your own health. Today's episode is all going to be about how we keep our hormones healthy and happy. So I would like to start off by reminding us that both men and women have hormones. Both men and women's hormones can be affected by the toxins in their environment. Therefore, this episode is just as important for my gentlemen as it is for my ladies. November is already a month where we're focused on men's health, which I think is fantastic. But I really think that these discussions and and discussions around stigmas need to happen more often than just a couple times a year. When we're looking at suicide rates, men are two to four times more likely to commit suicide and die by suicide than women, whereas women are three times more likely to attempt. These stats are absolutely heartbreaking, no matter which way you look at it. We need to look after our mental health, which is why I am here to inspire us to stand together as a community and really go against the grain and try to live our lives in a way that brings us back to our roots and allows us to advocate for a better future for our children. I want us to really start with the basics as to where our hormones really come from and how they're affected in the bigger scheme of things. When it comes to our hormones, they take place in our endocrine system. And our endocrine system is a group of organs and glands that are responsible for our hormones. Now, these hormones are like little messengers and they go throughout our body in a way where they help us with our metabolism, our sleep, our mood regulation, our our sexual um, side of things like our reproductive system, our libido, all of that fun stuff, you know, our human nature, I guess we'll call it. So there's a lot of things that our hormones are for, but I know that when a lot of us think of hormones, we think of PMS, right? Ladies, I know that you can agree on this one. What's funny is that PMS is something that we are seeing more and more and more of. And even though the stats that you look on the internet at are seeming quite low, like I came across a data company that said it was like a thousand cases, no more than a thousand cases of PMS per year in Canada. And I was like, who is grabbing this data? So I know as a coach that this is happening more frequently than not. And this is happening due to the fact of hormone disruption. Now, if we are looking at PMS alone, PMS is premenstrual syndrome. This is something that is typically a week prior to our bleed. And this is when we typically have symptoms like maybe we're having troubles regulating our mood. Maybe we have some cravings. Maybe we are a little bit more fatigued than normal. Um, You know, There's lots of different symptoms that can come into play with this, and every woman's a little bit different on what they experience. And to be completely honest with you, some of these symptoms can really insight as to which hormones are being disrupted. So we want to make sure that when we are a childbearing female or simply just menstruating, we want to track our cycle all month long because things that are taking place during a week 
that is not our bleed week or not the week prior to our period is still just as important as the weeks that I just mentioned. So if you are not currently tracking your cycle, that is the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to either use a calendar, use the um, the calendar in your phone, if you're not like a, a writing person where you need to see it, or simply use an app. One that I can recommend is the Flow app. It's fantastic. It gives you extra insights there. Um, another one is P Tracker. Both of those I can highly recommend. Now, us simply knowing about our cycle can allow for us to maximize our life. Even though that's not what this episode is about, we will be talking about that in future episodes. So now that we know that obviously toxins are creating PMS more frequently in our society, I want to talk with you guys about my own personal experience with hormones. If you have been an avid listener from the beginning, then you remember one of my first episodes, I dove deep into my mental health and how I've struggled since a kid with depression and anger and suicidal tendencies. And it was something that took me a lot of years to outgrow. But it was something that would always creep back in every once in a while. And I couldn't ever figure out as to why these things were creeping in. So without going into too much detail just yet, I do want to let you guys know that in January, I ended up going for some testing. I went for some testing because my heart was racing, which I mentioned on the last episode. So make sure that if you didn't listen to that episode, you go back after this one so that you can check it out because that is the start of this series from defeat to elite. And this episode is really part two of it. With that being said, I ended up finding out a lot more information than what I thought I was going to learn about my body. In that time, when I was getting the test done, not only was I diagnosed with adrenal insufficiency, but I was also diagnosed with PMDD. Now, if you're not familiar with PMDD, it is pretty much like PMS on steroids. So I want us to really understand that PMS, PMDD, endometriosis, PCOS, we're seeing so much of this. It is like numbers that we have never seen before. And I can promise you from the bottom of my heart, it is from the toxins in our environment that are creating these things. And studies have shown, science has shown that symptoms of endometriosis and PCOS have been reversed simply with paying attention to your nutrient intake, and also making sure that you're staying away from these toxins. So back to PMDD. This finally put the connectors together as to what has been going on my entire life. So if I can be completely honest with you guys, 2022 was starting to be a really hard year for me. I was starting to notice that I wasn't able to control my emotions. I was starting to get to a point where I was constantly thinking about suicide and it wasn't something that was happening all month long, but I would just go through these waves where it's like, I just couldn't control my emotions. I just honestly felt like I could just beat the shit out of a wall. And if I can be completely honest with you guys, there was even a situation where I got so mad one night that I kicked a wooden chair. And when I kicked that wooden chair with my bare foot, let me tell you, my foot did not win that war. And I ended up with a fat and swollen foot. Nobody knew about this aside from my husband. And it was after that that I was like, I fucking need help. I need some help. I don't know what is wrong with me, but I do not feel like me majority of the time. I feel like I am so completely out of control of my emotions when you guys know I put so much work into my mental health. I put so much work into my discipline. I put so much work into assessing myself, checking myself. If you guys follow me on social media, I am always the first person to call myself out. I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong. So like for me to be going through these things, it's like, how is this even possible with how much work that I've put into myself? Now, keep in mind 
that I had just come off of birth control. And ever since I came off of that birth control, I was on it for numerous times throughout my life because of course, every doctor wants to prescribe it for every other issue in your life, except for contraception. And if you're not, if you're using it for any other issue than contraception, get the fuck off of it. This is my number one recommendation to most people, unless there is a severe issue that is not acne, that is not mood control, that is not a hard period. Uh, You know, so many of us women are getting thrown on birth control because of PMS, right? And here these symptoms are just getting exaggerated, 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 whatever, exaggerated because it's synthetic hormones going into our body that are again affecting our real hormones, disrupting them and not dealing with the real issue, which is the toxins and the the load of stress that we're currently under as a society. So we just keep trying to put this It's like this little tiny band-aid on this gaping wound and thinking that we're fixing the problem. But then five years down the road of this birth control, we're completely losing our flipping mind and can't figure out why. So long story short on that one, we were off the birth control in 2021, but I just was never the same after that. Now, keep in mind, We know that right from when I got my period in grade five, which is ridiculous, I was 10 years old when I got my period. Getting my period so young like that is a clear indicator that I had toxins that disrupted my hormones and brought on my period prematurely. That is much too young to be getting your period. And we're seeing girls and I'm not going to call them women, but they are little girls getting their period much too young now more than ever because again the toxins that we are being um exposed to so for me this made sense because when i was in grade 5 and i got my period i was extremely overweight those few years prior from grade 2 to grade 5 were absolutely horrendous for me for stress and weight gain so you look at something like that and you're like shit man that makes a lot of sense so We know that by the time I got my period, it was like, it was June 29th and it was the last day of school. And so obviously I'm going into grade six in a couple of months. And by grade six, I was in such a deep depression that I had already started cutting myself. So I apologize if this is a trigger to anybody, but It's really important to talk about these kinds of things because we need to understand that a lot of the time when we are doing these types of things and taking these kinds of actions, whether we're cutting, we're having suicidal tendencies, we are experiencing mass amounts of depression where we can't function, a lot of this is not us. This is coming from a hormonal imbalance within us. So when it comes to PMDD, It is called premenstrual dysphoric disorder or premenstrual depressive disorder. So typically when they are diagnosing something like this, they are going through a questionnaire of about 11 questions. And if you get seven out of 11 answers, which is they're they're defining symptoms for you. So if you have seven out of the 11 symptoms, then you have PMDD. Now, I know a lot of people are probably like, okay, like that sounds a little sketchy, but let me tell you, if my mom and my husband can see that I'm a completely different person during this time, it's not something that I'm making up, guys. This is not something that I would joke about or take lightly. And the scariest part is that so many people would go to the doctor And many women with PMDD are actually getting diagnosed with a personality disorder. And it's so far from being a personality disorder as much as it is a hormonal imbalance that is making you rage or turning you into a person that you aren't, right? This isn't you. And that's what I really want to express is that if this is like ding, 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 dinging to you right now where you're like, girl, I am completely a different person around my period. This doesn't even have to be just the week prior. This could be as early as two weeks prior and continue into your bleed. So let me just break this down for you guys. 
there is three out of four weeks that could be a living freaking nightmare for you, which therefore leaves seven days for you to feel like yourself out of the month. This is why people start going crazy. And this is why females with PMDD are two to three times more likely to attempt suicide or at least have suicide ideologies, which therefore makes women with PMDD a much higher risk for suicide. This is something that is so scary because I've been there myself, guys, and I've been there recently. As much as I would love to say that this is something that just you can heal automatically, this shit takes time to heal. To extract toxins from your body takes time. To make sure that you're not adding more disruptors into your body when they are so prevalent in the environment around us is really hard to do, which is why when I am working with severe PMS, PMDD, adrenal insufficiency, hormonal imbalance cases, I am reassuring them that this is something that takes time. It's it's not something that you get to put a lot of work into and just see a quick turnover. It's something that you put a lot of work into and you see changes, a little bit of changes after three months, a lot more changes after six months, that many more changes after a year. And it just keeps building like that. Okay. But it is, it's unfortunate with how quickly we can go backwards with the progress that we've made moving forwards. So that means that we have to be really careful about how we manage our life moving forward when we know that we're in a position where we have already had hormonal imbalances and it's something that can happen again, okay? And it's something that can happen to everybody. So we need to just make sure that if we are in a spot where we feel like we can't handle who we are, that we feel like we're currently acting like somebody that we don't know, that we go and look for help. And if I can be completely honest, I would rather see people start with a naturopath with this one than a doctor because they are going to medicate you with a pharmaceutical that numbs you. That is going to be their answer. They're going to say, yep, you probably have... Uh, uh, you're struggling with depression, you're struggling with anxiety, here's some medication. And if you haven't listened to the episode where uh, Ty and I talk about depression and anxiety, you need to go back on that episode and listen to it. Because I can promise you guys that pharma is not always the answer. It is the blanket over top of the work that we actually need to do. Now, am I saying that every person shouldn't have, or that every, per- that, that, a far- that essentially that a prescription for helping you with depression and anxiety is a bad thing. That is not what I'm saying at all. But I'm saying that if you're willing to take that prescription, then you need to go and start working on the root root problem because all you're doing is giving yourself a little blanket and it is not going to take away this issue that you don't want to deal with anymore. So if you're strong enough to go to the doctor and get the prescription for it, then you're strong enough to take the steps that you need for a better life. Okay. So sometimes we need to get told the things that we don't really want to hear, but the amount of people that are simply jumping on meds because they think that that's the answer. Like guys, how do you think we survived like even 200 years ago before we had the pharmaceuticals, right? We did things based off of our human nature. Our body and our brain is so smart. It is so much smarter than we will ever understand. It knows how to function. We keep thinking that we need all these things in our life to make us happy. But at the end of the day, if we simply went to bed on time, woke up at the same time every day, got sunlight on our face, had the right nutrients, had a good community of people, stayed hydrated, moved our body, made sure that we focused on limiting stress, we would be the happiest and healthy people on the entire world. But for some reason, we're obsessed with consumerism, buying things, feeling like we don't have the tools that we need to put forth. And for some reason, we find these basics really, really boring, which is so silly because they're the ones that are going to make the difference in our life. So now that we know that I have been struggling, unfortunately, with PMDD, 
I want you guys to know that, again, this can happen to absolutely anybody. What I think happened is that I've had a Im hormonal imbalance from when I was young. I think that in junior high, I had cleaned up my eating. Well, it's kind of started in grade six, but I had really started to try to clean up my eating. I started exercising a little bit, you know, and I think I improved some things, but we need to understand that my body was young and it was trying to adapt. So therefore at that time, I still wasn't nice to it though. Like you guys, if you listen to my story, you know that I struggled really hard with eating disorders. I've always abused caffeine since I was in junior high, honestly. Um, you know, it was one of those things where I would start doing things a little bit better, but then I would go in the wrong direction again. And then by high school, my body was starting to fail on me again. I had a candida overgrowth, had to completely change my life and do a candida cleanse, which more so was about nutrition than anything else. And it was just sticking with whole foods, keeping out processed foods, not having any foods that would contain fungus, and just making sure that I was building up some good, healthy gut flora. This completely transform my life, which is why I will always advocate that food is health. Like we are what we eat. And so during this time, while I was on that candida cleanse, I genuinely did not have a cold. I didn't have a flu. It was the healthiest that I had ever been. But then I am, you know, starting to get into my later years of high school, go and move out on my own, start eating like shit again. And as you guys might know, I have blown up from, you know, chubby as a kid to really skinny in junior high and then fat again in, in a year of high school and then lost the weight again and then gained the weight back again after grade or sorry, then gained the weight back again in grade 12 when I moved and got into an unhealthy relationship. And then I lost it again. And then I gained it again in another unhealthy relationship. And then I lost it again. So like, and throughout all these years, I'm on birth control for my acne, but then it's not agreeing with my stomach. So then I keep switching the, the birth controls that I'm on. And it's just like this giant mess for my body that I am not surprised that by the last time that I got off birth control, it was like, fuck you, Sarah. Fuck you. Okay. I've been trying to hold out for you this entire time, but you just, you keep treating me like shit. Like why would I uphold for you when you can't even give me a few years of consistency without having these major disruptors. Because what I don't think a lot of people understand is that all of these birth controls are synthetic hormones, okay? It's not like they're extracting um, estrogen from uh, like a dead body or whatever so that they can put real estrogen into you. Everything is synthetic. So therefore, our body might not know how to properly digest it. And we need to make sure that we understand these things so that we are empowered to make the right decisions so that if something is going on with us, we can have a little bit of insight as to how we can potentially make these changes without feeling like we just need to jump on medication. So I think I've covered some really good information here in regards to PMS, how it affects our, our hormones um, for men and women in regards to how it can affect us mentally, how it does affect these suicide rates. And just to touch on these suicide rates a little bit more, you know, I think a lot of them are coming from the pressure of society that is that is out there with, like ever since COVID happened, we know that the world has not been the same. Community has not been the same. Stress levels have not been the same. So that obviously is playing a huge role um, because obviously the economy hasn't been the same, hasn't been the same either. And sometimes those financial stresses can be enough to um, make a person feel like like life isn't worth living anymore, right? There's also this really weird war going on of masculinity and femininity, and I'm not really sure what's going on with it, but we are going to talk about it in future episodes with some guest speakers that I'm really excited about, and then also. 
the fact that we have so many toxins that are affecting us, not recognizing how much they're affecting our mental health, how much anxiety they're creating for us, how much depression they're creating for us. So I just want to now give you guys some information as to what the government is doing to help us have less toxins, aka they're not doing anything to help us have less toxins. So we need to be the ones to advocate of how to make these changes in the future, but also just be knowledgeable, okay? So I want to start out with something that just happened in New York in at the end of 2022. I saw it actually when I was on vacation in January and or February, I think it was. Um, but regardless though, it's now illegal to sell certain popular laundry detergent brands in the state of New York. Now, this laundry detergent ban went into effect because of the fact that there is carcinogens called 1 and 4 dioxane that can be present in detergent. Now, what I want you guys to remember about this is that these chemicals aren't always listed on the back of your whatever it is that you're buying, okay? They are able to hide the names of these ingredients under different names, but also some of these chemicals are happening when heat is being applied. So I know a lot of you people have kids out there, and I know a lot of your kids make slime, and I know a lot of those slime recipes are getting your kids to add Tide into them. Stop by the grace of God, allowing your kids to make slime with freaking Tide in it, okay? The amount of chemicals in our laundry detergent is absolutely mind-blowing. And this is something that I have changed for our family. And I'm going to talk to you guys about how you can do that later on. But just to go back to the slime thing, guys, they are literally playing with this in their hands. They're rubbing it, creating heat, creating friction. Where do you think all those chemicals are going? Seriously, this is so dangerous for our kids. So please, please, please find a more friendly, health-friendly, hormone-friendly um, recipe for slime than adding laundry detergent in there. So if you are looking to make changes in your laundry room, we need to understand that these laundry detergents, these fabric softeners, and like these bounce sheets and stuff like that, they are some of the worst chemicals out there. Again, they can be even worse once heat's added to them, which we obviously do because we need to wash our clothes. We need to dry them in the dryer. And so what I have done is I have switched to the Attitude brand for right now for the laundry detergent. It is something that I am happy enough with. And we got to have some give and take in all of this. When I am trying to do like my husband's work clothes, something that might have like a heavier scent to them because he works with metals. So there's always like the smell of like diesel or metal or something like that on it. So I add borax in there. Okay. Borax is such a great natural cleaner. So we use the Attitude Laundry Soap, the borax, and that's in the washing machine. Then I use the wool balls with some essential oils in the dryer instead of the dryer sheets. So that's how you guys can easily make some changes. As I find more brands that I am proud to advocate for, then I will obviously let you guys know, but it is overwhelming when you're making these switches because so many things have so many different chemicals. So our number one rule of thumb is going to be that we make sure that we are looking for items that have the least amount of ingredients. This doesn't matter if it's our laundry detergent, if it's our makeup, our body wash, our food. We want to have the least amount of ingredients that we can, that we know what those ingredients are. Okay. So then now that we know that we can make a change in the laundry room, then we need to understand that. The FDA in the USA is one of the, I guess you'd say, they're the e one of the most easiest regulate regulatory boards 
to let things pass. Okay, so they have a lot of loopholes that they allow people to jump through. So you find a lot of common stories of people and even actually clients that I have of especially the meat not agreeing with with people's digestion with people's digestion systems. So the reason why this is happening is because they are pumping them full of chemicals which include these synthetic hormones. So because the states is so lax on what they're permitting or how they're testing things, like sometimes, for example, if there is an ingredient that's going into something else, they won't make you list the byproduct of it. They won't make you list any other details if there is, um, like let's just say we were adding in flour into another recipe into a into another item we wouldn't need to list if we added anything else into that flour to go into that item does that make sense so it's just crazy the amount of loopholes that i guess they're able to jump through and so we need to understand that we're going to hear things that you know, Europe has a better regulation system. Even Australia seems to have a better regulate regulatory board in regards to how they are really detailing things out. Canada and um, like the Food and Drug uh, Administration there, they are a little bit better than the states. But again, I am not going to give them any pats on the back because something that they are trying to do right now, which has really, really bothered me, um, is the fact that the Canadian Food Inspection Agency, so that's like our FDA, they are trying to get to a point where they do not have to check over the seeds that farmers are using to let us know about any type of GMOs that are on them, any type of pesticides, herbicides, any type of toxins, which is crazy because we think of the organic farmers that try so hard to make sure that their products are 100% organic. Like they go for third-party testing. Some of them send them overseas for thousands of dollars just to get the approval because we need to understand that we export a lot of our food, which therefore means that if people, or that if people, that if countries have a more strict regulation than what we have in Canada or the U.S., this is completely screwing these farmers over if they're not able to export their stuff because of the fact that they bought a seed that they were told was organic, but then when they go and do the testing on it, it's actually not. So we already know how fucked these farmers have been in regards to like, let's just say the last like 50 years of the changes that the government has made them make in regards to the type of equipment that they're using, the limitations that they have on what they're able to um, like define, right? When we're looking at what I'm saying here in regards to organic and not, because now you are able to spray beside an organic field. So it's like if the wind is really windy that day, the chances of that not coming over is slim to none, right? So we need to make sure that we understand that organic isn't always organic. That's why I don't push organic all the time with people. There's some foods that I do think are important to have organic, especially our fruits if we can. But the, the truth is, is that they are using so many different sprays and things and GMOs out there, that it is important that we try to make sure that we're washing our produce the best that we can. So I want to encourage all of us to try to go direct to farmer the as often as we possibly can. Truly, guys, these grocery prices, I don't know about the states, but Canada is fucking on one right now and they need to get off their high horse here. And we need to start advocating for change because for some reason we just keep bending over and taking it and taking it and taking it. And I just don't know how many more times we're going to take it before somebody finally says something. So it's not okay with the prices that they're charging 
for the foods that we're currently getting, okay? So the fact that you're going to buy a little tiny pint of berries and they're trying to charge you $7 for it and it's sprayed with pesticides, like, fuck you guys, okay? I know a lot of you are going to agree with me on this one. So in order for us to make change, we have to not be afraid to advocate for it. Now, the government always tries to be like, oh, change costs so much money. It is this, it is that. But you know what, guys? I am going to be writing a letter to our um, to our premier, and I'm going to be advocating some of my ideas that I have of how we can make this change moving forward without costing a whole bunch of money and how it can actually incentivize these, these companies to make change over time. And we actually make money on it because they're going to be taxed if they're not changing in time. But that new companies moving forward that we don't use all of these sprays on our food or we don't simply make things out of plastics and shit that we can't recycle or we don't use materials that we know are seeping in through our skin and causing all of these health issues, okay? Like these are just no brainers for me. So the next time that somebody tries to tell you that it's too hard to change, don't listen to that person and let's chat because there is always going to be a way for us to be able to make change. So let's see what else we want to talk about here. So the beauty products is another big one, okay? I know that we've heard of sulfates and carcinogens and parabens and phthalates, and we love to smell good. But the truth is, guys, is that the better it smells, the harder it probably is on our body. So the more that we can stay away from things like perfumes, especially when we're looking at these really cheap body sprays and stuff like that, no, 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 don't do it. Um, the other thing that you can do is if you are wanting to use spray, yes, we're still going to be breathing it in. But if you spray it on your clothes as opposed to your skin, again, you're going to probably have less likely of that seeping into your skin, right? Um, so there are ways where you can still use some of these products, but maybe not use them in the same way. I definitely, definitely encourage you guys to stay away from like perfumey lotions. Um, you know, we have to be really careful on the deodorants that we're using because they're putting a ton of aluminums in there. We look at things like the toothpaste and even the chemicals that they're putting in there. And before you guys are like, oh my God, what can I use that doesn't have chemicals? This is where I'm saying that we need to give and take a little bit because there's going to be times where we simply will have to use products that have chemicals in them. But like I said, this episode is not about you clearing out the house and the kitchen sink. It's about knowing where we can make these changes over time because Christmas is coming up. We're buying gifts for people. We're buying gifts for ourselves a lot of the time. So we're giving gift ideas. And this is a great time for us to change around that list and maybe make some hormone friendly changes during this season that we know are going to benefit us and our family, right? Because this isn't something that just affects women or this isn't something that just affects men. We are seeing like I said, the the highest hormonal imbalances that we have ever seen. Like our men are being born with the least amount of testosterone that we have ever seen. We're seeing women struggling with infertility at higher rates than we have ever seen, which therefore gets me into the topic of clothes. I want to make sure that we understand that they are putting plastics in our clothes, like all these stretchy clothes and nylons and things like that we want to try to go for uh cotton the most often that we can and um i'm gonna put like a list i think i'm gonna do like a list of just some swap options in the show notes so that you don't have to worry about writing these all down right now and i'll just put a couple of the categories that i went through so that you guys can easily make this swap but so many people don't realize that you know, us sitting with these plastics and chemicals on our clothes and we're sitting and we're sweating and like these things are seeping into our endocrine system, into our blood system, guys. We need to know 
that cheaper isn't always better. Like I'm sure most of us have had a pair of blue jeans where we have had that dye of the blue jeans either stain our shoes, our socks, or possibly even our skin, okay? That is not a good sign. That is not something that we want to be sitting in all day long, right? We want to make sure that we are choosing sanitary choices. So like our tampons and our pads that don't contain bleach and all of these other plastics that are in there. Like the fact that we are bleaching our cotton to put up our hoo-ha really has me wondering what the fuck we are doing, okay? the the t- If we could change like two things, it would be to go with a more friendly tampon and pad or simply use a diva cup, something like that. But I want to remind you guys that the more often that we can use a pad, the better. What we are doing when we have our period is, yes, we're shedding our lining, but we're also getting rid of a lot of toxins, extra hormones. It's all the extras coming out, okay? So we don't want to keep that inside of us. Like when you think about using this tampon that has a shit ton of chemicals on it, and it's just like staying in our hoo-ha for hours, during the day? Like, do we think that this is contributing to our infertility issues? Uh, fuck. Yeah, it is. So if we can switch up those guys, but also switch up our underwear and our bras, that would be my biggest suggestion because obviously yes, t-shirts and jeans and shit matter, but we don't want to stress ourselves out too much. Let's get some quality socks, some quality undies and some quality bras. And that will make a huge difference. Gentlemen, same thing goes for you. Get those cotton boxers. Get away from these these materials that are not serving our hormones. Now, I really just don't want you guys to come out of this episode feeling overwhelmed. I want you guys to come out of this episode feeling empowered because we've talked about a lot of different areas where we can find chemicals and plastics and hormone disruptors, our endocrine disruptors. But I want to talk about our food system a little bit more. And you know, the preservatives that they're putting in there, we will always do best and function best off of one ingredient foods. And one ingredient foods are the ones that God put on this earth that naturally grow the animals that are here. If you're a vegan or vegetarian, no shame on you. Literally, you got the plants that God put on this earth too. Am I right? So we want to stick to those as much as we can. Anything else we need to understand has been made to be appealing to us. All of these boxed foods, yes, they were created for convenience, but because there is such a large array of them, they obviously need to be more appealing than their neighbor sitting on the shelf beside them. So we're going to see a lot of hyper palatable foods, which therefore means that they taste really good, but they don't actually give us any satisfaction. They spike our blood sugar. They make us feel like we have more cravings than what we had going into eating this item. And they really put us in a position where we can feel really lethargic. We can start having some gut issues and really some even further health issues such as diabetes, potentially even cancer. So we want to make sure that without scaring ourselves, we're playing with that 80-20 rule where we are trying to get about 80% of our week in with these whole food one ingredient choices. For the other 20%, that's when we can have fun with it and not stress. But I do want to just let you guys know that a lot of the time they are coloring our food simply for us to be able to like looking at it. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was going for an orange pop, nothing's going to stop me from drinking the orange pop that's not orange. Okay. Like it doesn't need to be orange in order for me to enjoy it. And I hope that most of us would think that way. Like as long as it tastes good, I don't think it needs to be colored. But these colors are hurting us so badly. Like if you look in any of the pops, there's caramel in it. If you look at, you know, the um, 
like the Gatorades and things like that, which I think is actually really funny if we look at Gatorade coming out with their G Fit. So Gatorade has always been obviously the leading sports drink that we thought was the the healthiest. And I had noticed that they came out with their G um their G Fit line and I just could see that they completely transformed their formula because they were having food colorings in there. And like some of these food colorings are like blue number one, brilliant blue, FCF, E133, F, D, and C blue number two. So typically it's Allura red, it's yellow, and it's blue. Those are typically the three that you see. Sometimes green is in there too. But we need to understand that these colors are not natural. They have been proven to be cancer causers and they are banned in a lot of other countries. So with us understanding that we have a role to play in our future society to make sure that we're educated in a way where we can make decisions about our health that we feel confident about that we know that we're building a future and a society that is going to work well for our little humans that we're raising, knowing that they're going to be able to have nutrient-dense food and not be scared of the foods that are being put out in front of them. Not everything needs to be genetically modified. Not everything needs to be pumped with a thousand chemicals. And a lot of the reason why this is, is because they want these foods and these items to last on the shelf so that these businesses can make money because there's a thousand different competitors and everything needs to have some shelf life. So the funny part is, is actually if there was less competition, we would probably see less chemicals in these products. So if we can take anything from this massively long podcast, we are going to make sure that if we are in a position where we feel like we are out of control of our emotions when we're close to our period, maybe we have a partner, a female partner that we're noticing this in, we are going to go and get help. And I do recommend that help starting at the point of a naturopath or an acupuncturist, okay? Those are probably the two best routes that you can go to. And if you feel like they're not giving you the answers that you need, then go and see the doctor, okay? But just remember that these prescriptions that we're getting are blankets. They are not the they are not fixing the root cause. So in order for us to get the change that we're looking for, we need to make sure that we're tackling the root cause. In order to get to the root cause, a lot of the time we simply need to strip back from all of this bullshit that we have built in today's society and just get back to our natural roots. Going back to what I said about, you know, going to bed and waking up at the same time, enjoying sunlight, nutrient dense food, quality community. Like, it's the basic things that really make us the healthiest. Like, we didn't just all of a sudden invent all of this stuff that just makes us healthier. Because if we did, we'd already have a cure for cancer. We wouldn't be seeing mental health at the rate that it is. We wouldn't be hearing all of these things that they're wanting to, you know, charge more for vitamins or that we're having a massive um, uh, like food shortage, like all these things that are just complete bullshit, where if we work together and focused on things in the right way and people's pockets weren't being lined, we would be a healthy and happy society with healthy and happy hormones. So if you are looking to make some changes in your household, take a look at the show notes. I'm going to give some suggestions of how you can swap things and don't feel like you need to take it on at once. You know, maybe it means that for Christmas, you ask for some glassware and you throw out all that plastic Tupperware. The biggest thing that we need to remember when it comes to plastic, we can't heat it up. Even when it's the water bottles that we buy from the store and we just like keep in our car in case we're thirsty when it's really hot out. Yeah, don't do that. Stop doing that. Okay. The heat completely transforms the plastic. That's when the chemicals, that's when essentially it starts creating other chemicals and things start getting dangerous. Just remember that they can 
lie about what's on the label. So we genuinely want it to be ingredients that we're, that we're familiar with. We want to make sure that it's a short list of ingredients. And we just want to make sure that we know that we can advocate for change. We don't have to stay in this spot. So with that being said, I'm going to leave this episode here. But I want to remind you guys that this podcast grows based off of your views and based off of your reviews. It would mean the absolute world to me if you share this episode, tag me in it, or if you want to leave me a review. I love hearing your guys' feedback. It literally means more to me than you guys understand. So we don't have a sponsor on this podcast right now, and we would like to try to keep it that way. But in order for us to continue to grow, this means that this knowledge needs to be shared. So please make sure to share it. Tag the uh, Naked and Truth podcast on Instagram or on Facebook, and uh, we will keep growing together. So I hope you guys got a shit ton of value from this episode. I am so excited to drop it, and I just can't wait to hear your guys' feedback on this. So get ready for our next episode next week, and I will catch you next fucking Monday. And that's another honest episode dropped. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Naked and Truth, where we come together every Monday morning to set the week off with intention. Don't forget to head over to our Instagram page, at Naked and Truth Podcast, to stay up to date on future episodes guest speakers, and other kick-ass info that can help you continue to create your impact. And you know that reviews are so valuable when it comes to building a community of like-minded people. So if you enjoyed this podcast, please, please, please drop some love on Apple Podcast Reviews and share this episode with someone who you think needs it. Thank you guys so much again for tuning in to today's episode. I'll catch you next Monday. And don't forget, love always wins.